गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी ऑन हमारे इस एटीन सीजन में आप सभी का स्वागत है बोबड़े जी ट्रैवलिंग में इसलिए वो कनेक्ट नहीं हो पा रहे हैं तो मैं चाह मैडम को रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ कि आप स्टार्ट कीजिए एंड आई एम वेरी सो मेरा नेटवर्क जो कनेक्शन पता है तो मैं पहले आ, सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का जो है यहाँ पर स्वागत करता हूँ और सिद्धा जी यहाँ स्वागत करता हूँ और मैं थोड़ा सा पहले सिद्धा जी के बारे में बताना चाहूंगा इन केस इफ अगर फिर से अगर मेरा कनेक्शन कट हो जाए तो आई एम सिंसियरली रिक्वेस्ट टू सिद्धा जी प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस टू योर सेल्फ एट सच टाइम उन्होंने अपना ग्रेजुएशन जो है वो साउथ इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सिकंदराबाद से कंप्लीट किया उनका टॉपिक जो है बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक ग्रामीण उद्योग सब अर्बन मॉल टॉपिक उनका है मास्टर्स भी उन्होंने अपना जो पूरा किया है वो आर्कियोलॉजी एंड एंशेंट हिस्ट्री में कंप्लीट किया महाराजा सहजराव यूनिवर्सिटी बड़ोड़ा से और उनका जो टॉपिक था इथनोग्राफी स्टडी ऑन ज्वेलरी मेकिंग इन तेलंगाना देन उनका पी का टॉपिक जो है वो एक और एक इंटरेस्टिंग सब्जेक्ट कि जो हिस्टोरिकल मॉन्यूमेंट्स एज म्यूजियम्स एडेप्टिव यूजेबिलिटी डिजाइनिंग एंड चैलेंजेस सो इट्स रियली वंडरफुल टॉपिक मैं uh, अगर कभी हो सका तो इस टॉपिक पर हम जरूर बात करेंगे लैंग्वेजेस के बारे में अगर देखा जाए तो उनको uh, हिंदी तेलुगु गुजराती इंग्लिश ये सभी लैंग्वेजेस की वो जानकार है सो so, ये भी बहुत खुशी की बात है क्योंकि एक इतिहास का विद्यार्थी होने के नाते हम जितनी भाषाओं का ज्ञान रखते हैं उतना हमारे लिए बहुत यूजफुल हो जाता है अब उनका प्रोफेशनल एक्सपीरियंस के बारे में मैं थोड़ा सा शॉर्ट में बताना चाहूंगा शी इज वर्क एज जूनियर आर्किटेक्ट देन वर्किंग एज क्लाइंट फॉर गूगल रोल्स एंड रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज एज एन आई टी एनालिस्ट एंड देन शी वर्क विथ आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया एक्सकावेशन ब्रांच ऑन टेम्पररी बेसिस रोल्स उनका जो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी uh, रहा है डिजिटाइजेशन ऑफ एंटीक्विटी ड्रॉइंग्स थ्री डायमेंशनल इमेजेस मैप प्लॉटिंग और टेक्निकल स्किल्स और देखा जाए तो बहुत सारा वर्क उन्होंने किया है उनके जो प्रोजेक्ट्स भी उन्होंने कंप्लीट किए हैं कुतुब शाही टॉम्स एंड रीडिजाइनिंग द सराउंडिंग्स ऑफ डेड एंड निगलेक्टेड मॉन्यूमेंट्स और भी कई सारे प्रोजेक्ट्स उनके हैं बट स्पेशली जो नासा के लिए उन्होंने चार मीनार का जो वर्क किया था इट्स इंटरेस्टिंग वर्क एंड देन शी इज मास्टर इन सॉफ्टवेयर यूजिंग द सॉफ्टवेयर लाइक ऑटो कैड फोटोशॉप स्केचअप सो एक हिस्ट्री आर्कियोलॉजी का इस फील्ड से रिलेशन रखना ये बड़ी खुशी की बात है साइबर आर्कियोलॉजी ये टॉपिक जो है अभी तक हमारे इसमें इतना नहीं आया है बट यहाँ आप जो जिस तरह से कार्य करें लगता है कि जल्दी हमारी न्यू जनरेशन जो है इसमें भी सीख सकेगी आप जैसे जो स्कॉलर्स अगर इसमें आगे चलाकर हम लोगों को अगर नॉलेज दें एंड नॉन टीचिंग नॉन टेक्निकल एक्सपीरियंस में भी उनके कई सारे वर्क है बट मैं क्षमा चाहता हूँ उन्होंने कई सारे कॉन्फ्रेंसेस वर्कशॉप एंड इसमें नेशनल जो लेवल के सेमिनार्स हुए उसमें अपने पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन किए हैं शी गॉट द फेलोशिप अवार्डेड यूनेस्को सर्प इंडिया ग्रांट फॉर प्रिजर्विंग एंड हेरिटेज फॉर द रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट टाइटल संगनेर ओल्ड ट्रेडिशन न्यू विजन सो इस तरह से उनका एक अपना मल्टी डाइवर्सिटी अप्रोच रहा है सो आई एम थैंकफुल सिद्धार्थ जी विथस and i request to you that please continue our today's session thank you thanks a lot uh thank you ujang sir for this wonderful introduction and i welcome all the participants uh let me start share the screen uh hope my screen is visible to everyone and my voice is also yes, audible yes 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 it's visible and audible also thank you okay so to begin with today's class it's a uh, museums of telangana gleaning into cultural history of the region so before getting into the topic i am pretty sure that every one of us have somewhere or the other understood the term museum and everyone has our own definition and there were many scholars before me who have scholars and professors who have definitely said the definitions and how museum is important to us and what is the 
major and key role of museum in making us understand a history a cultural history history and one thing that i always believe is what was history is in history and we coming generation are going to create history so museum is a house of past present and future so that is the small definition of museum and uh, when you see this image on my uh, front screen it's a whale rebecca why i have used this whale rebecca is it's an italian neoclassical style example and through this i would uh, i'm trying to give an example that how one museum display can help us in understanding the various other other neoclassical or various other such art cultural style that were being happening in the contemporary Uh, countries as well and this particular displays are the evidence of those particular era so to begin with introduction as i already mentioned the term museum like most words has changed in meaning with the time definitely the museum word is been changing with the time and with the evolvement of the society the museums also get evolved today it conveys concept not only preserving the material evidences of human and natural world but also of a major force in interpreting these things the idea is perceived positively and the availability of a museum as a public facility is considered desirable in developed and developing countries alike definitely this idea which have been coming up for the museum Museums in the developed and developing countries showcases how the evolution has taken place, and museum definitely plays its very key role in understanding the evolution and the chronology of a region. For countries with a significant past, museum may be seen to have a vital culture and even economic role to play, as I mentioned earlier. Museum today, one of the famous quote, which is very interesting quote that was. been mentioned by the in, in international council of museum was in the service of society and of its development definitely it's so wonderful to understand that museum is not only so used to service the society by educating them for the uh, about the historical background as well as it even contribute in the development of the society as well as the region and the nation so this is a small introduction regarding museum to understand what exactly museum is because the term museum itself is give us so much idea about multidisciplinary it is not stuck to one subject museum widen up the area for various other fields as we talk about technology as we talk about archaeology we talk about so many different different subjects together and a combination of all the subject is museology and the the outcome that we see is museum okay to begin with the cultural history of telangana one of the most interesting point about understanding the cultural history of telangana and the museums of telangana is we are so fortunate enough that telangana museums not only display the cultural history of its own region but also it's a combination of two region because once it was andhra pradesh as well so today when we talk about telangana definitely it's even showing the significance of the andhra region as well as telangana region so how beautifully this shows the friendship between two region and how well we can understand the cultural background of two different states so coming to telangana The Telangana word is derived from the word Telugu anagana which means a place where Telugu is spoken and later on Nizam has given the word Telangana Telangana as a geographical and political entity was born on June 2nd 2014 as the 29th state and the youngest state in the union of India it is considered as one of the youngest state in union of India and definitely it was been established in the year 2014 so we know that it's a youngest state but definitely this state has a huge cultural history of 2500 years or more where starting with its rich heritage to begin with it satwana ruled this kingdom uh, i mean this region between krishna and godavari around 230 bc to 220 ad then I mean, between 1083 to 1203, under the reign of Akatiyas, Warangal was established as the capital. And in again 13th century, Alauddin Khilji's general Malik Kafur attacked Warangal and led the decline of Akatiyas. Then this region, somewhere around in 16th century, came under the Delhi Sultanate, and we have this famous Golconda, which again fell into the hands of Aurangzeb. 
Then in 17th century, we got uh, Asif Zahir, which established the Nizam dynasty and established this particular region independent and made Hyderabad the capital of the complete empire in 1769. Then again in 1799, the British signed an alliance with Nizam Asif Jah. The Nizam ceded the coastal Andhra and Royal Sima region to Britishers. Now, why is it so important to understand the cultural history? It's because when we are visiting a museum and trying to understand the artifacts and display, once if we are able to identify its cultural history or we are aware about its cultural history it becomes very easier for us to correlate our artifacts our, our own findings our own culture with those dynasties and it becomes easier for us to understand how rich and how established each and every dynasty was along with it what was the contribution of every ruler to the development of kingdom can be seen and all this is possible through museum Okay, so now we have museums, but who takes care of it? It's definitely Department of Heritage Telangana. The Department of Archaeology was established in the year 1914 by Nawab Sir Mir Osman Ali Khan. He was the seventh Nizam. And then this Department of Heritage Telangana is a premier organization for archaeological research and protection of cultural heritage of Telangana state. And the other objectives that comes under this Department of Heritage Telangana is it maintains the monuments, archaeological sites and remains of historical importance, which is one of its major activity. Apart from that, protection and preservation of historical monuments and sites under AP Ancient and Historical Monuments and Archaeological Sites Remains Act number no. 7 of 1960. It comes under this act. And then even it it it's one of one another major role of this department is establishment and upgradations of museums so we have understood the cultural history what museum is what is what is the importance of a cultural history how telangana got its evolution and who takes care of it and which department runs the museums now let us see what are the varied types of museums in telangana which serve us so many cuisines of our history to begin with there are 13 prominent museums in the state of telangana among which alampur and kolampaka are the two site museums in the state the district museums are in Warangal, Karimnagar, Nizamabad, Pilamari, and Pangal. Hyderabad city has four museums of great significance. Due to the constraint of time, not uh, it's uh, like not each and every museum could be covered because Hyderabad or the region of Telangana has varieties of museum, but there are few museums that are, has some important. Uh, activities happening there or because of its location or probably because of its uniqueness are taken uh, new uniqueness are taken uh, taken up in this uh, subject or in this uh, lecture to actually get a basic idea that what exactly the telangana region has to serve us all and it's been serving since the time starting with the district museum of kolampaka this museum is situated in Nalgonda district. Kolam Park comes in the district of Aler. And this is one of the famous place. Kolam Park is famous not only because of museum, but because it also has an ancient 2,000-year-old Jain temple of Mahavira, which still exists, which is still getting developed and which has beautiful ornamentation in it. So the beauty of this particular museum is it is near to this Jain in temple and it is situated into again a temple complex of Someswara Swami temple. Basically understanding the history of Kolampaka, it was the second capital of Kalyani Chalukya during 11th century. Okay? And during this period, the village was a great religious center of Jains and ranked among the other great centers of South India. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. आपका स्लाइड जो है वो चेंज नहीं हो रहा है पहला ही स्लाइड जो है वो है देरा अभी तक थोड़ा स्लाइड हाँ स्लाइड मूव नहीं हो रहा है आपके अब दिख रहा है सर इस में स्लाइड विजिबल नो इज इट विजिबल 
नो मैम आप फुल स्क्रीन क्लोज कीजिए अब दिख रहा है यस नाउ विजिबल ओके ओके सो शुड आई गो अहेड विद दिस और नाउ इज इट विजिबल यस मैम यस इज इट विजिबल राइट ओके या सो what are the important uh, displays of this particular museum some of the important sculptures here are that of mahavira matyasya vallabha chamundi nandi chamundi nandi which ranges from 6th to 16th century ad the director of heritage has established a sculptural gallery here which exhibits artifacts gathered from various historical monuments in kolamba artifacts from both chalukya and kakatiya styles are displayed here in museum and one of the important aspects another aspect that i would like to highlight here is the location of the museum like me i me being jain i have also visited this kolampaka temple regularly since my childhood and one thing that time we uh, being a a uh, child definitely we are interested in roaming around like going to new places that time we didn't know that okay this mu this is a museum and this carries such a uh, great significance and all but definitely being a child i always used tend to go towards this uh, temple because in this region there is one attraction which is definite which definitely attracts each and every visitor is the uh, cart the horse cart okay so they uh, there the horse cart has uh, miss it i'm sorry your if your slide is showing any images at this point we can't see it's still stuck on the district museum colon yeah no oh uh, yeah can yes. you see now uh, yeah yeah uh, i think I'll, you might I'll have just, to change yeah in yeah, a different i'll do that thank you yeah okay yeah thank you okay so i was saying that yeah so uh, so they have this attraction of this horse cart okay so this is a very interesting thing that how uh, what are the various ways how local people also helps in you know promoting a, a museum because here this museum is in a very uh, interior location so people who actually tend to visit this ale region or kolampaka or in and around region will come and visit this particular museum and understand okay this has such a rich culture uh, objects displayed here apart from that there is no other source from where we get to know okay there is this museum uh, there is this site museum being there so uh, this uh, so i used to uh, tend to be stubborn like i i just want to go on a ride on this uh, horse cart and what this horse cart people used to do they take us for a ride and they uh, drop us for, to this shiv temple they even they are not aware much about this museum and this rich cultural heritage museum but they knew that okay here there is this particular uh, site museum is been there and uh, we'll get the visitors here and one more thing is it's a small village so definitely there are people who sit outside to collect money and there are small vendors there so their thinking was that they join hands with each other they get the visitor we buy something or we tend to give some food to beggar and that has been contributed so what, that is their strategy but after getting into museology i understood this strategy being a child definitely my parents also used to accompany me to this particular uh, temple and uh, along with my parents my relatives who not only me like whoever the child who wants to sit in the cart they gets their relative and that is how this particular place got a number of visitors whenever there is some occasion happening in the temple so certain times unknowingly even locals also contribute to an extent in promoting a museum and taking at this rich cultural heritage to the common people or to the visitors as well so when we see this this is in mahavir in yogi yoga posture of uh, chalukya period which belongs to 13th century ad basically this particular sculpture is been placed right on the entrance of the museum because it has this uh, jain temple in and around so definitely one of the strategy of attracting and it is quite huge in size so it has been placed there and you can see this is the torana which has been placed outside the temple in the corner and with the due course of time they started putting this tube lights and all but basically this is also one of the uh, example of as a display but because of unawareness many people just see it or use it as a selfie point or something but yes definitely this this is also a great uh, display in that museum now this is a nandi 
Anandi statue of Kakatiya period, which again belonged to 13th century AD. And towards the right corner, this is the sculpture gallery which is being placed, which has different types of sculpture, sculptures that belong to 13th century and 12th century AD. Along with the sculptures, we have a good number of inscriptions as well quoted on the stone plaque. So this column part was very interesting to understand the strategies that can be followed to promote a museum. Now coming down to the next museum is the Alampur Site Museum, which is located in Mahbub Nagar. Now Alampur Site Museum is located in the Mahbub Nagar district of Telangana. It is home of many ancient uh, Navabrahma temple of 7th century AD. Basically, it is a home of Navabrahma temple, which belongs to 7th century AD. Along with this, Alampur Site Museum preserves archaeological remains, which again date back to 6th and 7th century AD. Now, this Alampur Museum is known for its large and varied collection of sculptures that are arranged in a big hall. There's a huge hall displayed there and all the sculptures together are being displayed in that particular hall. Now, Alampur Museum was established in the year 1952. Understanding its surrounding, it has a famous Navabrahma temple where more than 124 stone sculptures and 26 inscriptional slabs are on display, including 64 loose sculptures. Now, when I'm mentioning these loose sculptures, what do I mean by loose sculptures? Definitely, I'll show you some pictures also of it. But for here, to understand what is the loose sculpture is, there are various sculptures which have some section number, but they are placed in and around the site. They are not being used as a display inside the museum, but they are placed around the uh, site, probably because of various reasons. To take a walk around and understand, okay, they have this kind of sculptures also in it, or maybe before entering, you get to the pathway and you can see those sculptures in the entrance. So there are certain strategies that they follow. And one more interesting thing about this site museum is it also has a temple in and around it. But definitely when the visitors visit this temple, they tend to visit this Alampo site museum as well. So that is how a temple also is contributing in the promotion of a museum. Okay, the period of the sculptures ranges from 6th to 16th century AD and they belong to Kakatiya, Chalukya and Vijayanagara dynasty. There are different, different dynasty sculpture which are being displayed here. As I mentioned, there's this, this is the big hall and this various kinds of sculptures are placed in this manner in the sculpture gallery of Alampur Museum. Apart from this, the visitors facil facilities that they provide is clean drinking water and restrooms. And even seating arrangements are provided in the garden area because it's a pil pilgrimage center and along with pilgrimage center, it has something st stored of our history. Now coming down to the next museum, it is the Buddhist Heritage Museum, Buddha Vanam, which is located in Nalgonda district near Nagarjun Sagar Dam region. Okay, so definitely Nagarjun Sagar Dam is famous and this also is a tourist attractive spot. So I am trying to understand that whenever I'm talking about museum, this museum is somewhere or the other located, though they are in a very isolated place or very, you know, in the interior space, but because of some or the other important historic structure, this museum somehow or the other gets some kind of attention, but definitely it needs more of attention to it, but somehow it managed to attract the attention of the visitor. Same goes with Buddhist Heritage Museum, Buddhavanam in Nagarjun Sagar Dam region. It is located in Nalgonda district of Telangana. And it is home of to some of the oldest Buddhist remains. A vast number of historic coins and artifacts were recovered here during the construction of the dam. Many of these artifacts have now been preserved in Buddhist Heritage Museum. Buddhavanam near Nagarjun Sagar Dam, Nalgonda district, which was developed again by Department of Heritage, Telangana. This Buddhist Heritage Museum was officially inaugurated on May 14, 2014, in connection with Buddha Jayanti celebrations. Now, when we understand about the museum, definitely we have to correlate many things with the museum. Now, as I mentioned in the earlier slides, that how a temple is contributing. Same way, certain occasions when this Buddhist heritage or when these museums are being inaugurated, 
inaugurated also plays a very important role as this as this was being inaugurated on the day of buddha jayanti so definitely whenever they would like to celebrate the anniversaries of the museum they can celebrate in the form of buddha jayanti and attract a lot of tourists in that way who belongs to that particular who belongs to who that community or probably who, who are keen interested in understanding that particular community or what is buddhism or what what does buddhist heritage carry so these are the certain things that they can pick up and they can you know uh, create awareness through this but different different uh, days which are which uh, carry some of the other importance apart from this 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 buddhavanam uh, a buddhavanam park is coming up in this particular region which is again a major project of the government of telangana and this will contribute again towards the development of museum as well as that region now the museum showcases an impressive display of buddhist culture buddhist tankas bronzes pala gandhar sculptures ajanta paintings and stone sculptures there are new galleries being added here for the purpose of preserving timeless monuments and sculptures that depict the rich past heritage and glory of this region apart from this the visitors facilities are drinking water and restrooms seating arrangements are provided in the garden and definitely as i said there is a major upcoming project which is coming up which will be a great contribution again uh yeah so we have seen the districts district museum we have seen the uh, site museum now we coming down to the salajan museum definitely salajan museum is well known museum to all of us we must not have visited it but we must have definitely heard about it and we must have definitely heard about the veiled rebika which i have showed in the very first slide which is one of the uh, important uh, display or unique display of salajan museum along with it salajan museum is a house of many things to understand its basic history in 1961 through an act of parliament the museum along with library was declared as the institution of national importance and since then salajan museum carries a national importance the administration of the museum was transferred to an autonomous board having governor of andhra pradesh as its chairman the museum was transferred to the present building specially built for housing the museum and library in the year 1968 the collection of museums can be divided into indian art middle eastern art far eastern art european art and children section definitely not only the museum which is contributing in and making us understand the different uh, art or the diversities of art but definitely the library of the museum also as equally rich treasure inherited in it it's worth visiting the library as well because it has a lot of history books gathered in it to understand how the cultural evolution takes place so that is also one of the important factor of salajan museum it has a library and it is wonderful to visit now the display gallery so this is one of the display gallery which show which is showing the costumes of different region now this particular gallery when i spoke about the children section this gallery belongs to that children section which has the small clay toys and this clay toys are being uh, have been dressed up with different different regions dressing style so this is very interesting for kids to know that okay this particular region or this africans have this particular type of costume this particular uh, this region has this particular kind type of costume so it it is a very nicer way to educate kids through this display now on the right hand side corner this is the ivory gallery which has a great uh, you know great displays of this ivory from a miniature chess board made out of ivory to a youth chair made of ivory so one can understand that so much integrate work used to happen in early medieval or late medieval periods which has been displayed here or in the modern era where this art just the artist have contributed so much in developing this kind of artifacts so it is very interesting to visit and apart from this the main purpose of this particular image is this image was taken after the pandemic matlab uh, when the government gave uh, permission to open up the museum immediately as the permission was given salajan museum maybe many other museums in india started 
uh, using those norms that have been given to them in order to get back the museum in the working position and to let in the visitors who are desperately waiting to understand its history so can you see the small circles placed on the floor these were been made for the with the purpose of social distancing apart from this each room outside of the each room the capacity of the visitors was been mentioned that particular gallery can have a capacity of 20 visitors not more than that so that is how through this but uh, th that is how the norms were being followed once after uh, once the museums were open during the pandemic times yeah the same thing it's a miniature painting gallery along with this you can see these are the particular uh, circles that have been made in order to maintain the social distancing and people can leisurely take some time admire the paintings admire the displays there and can move ahead so that there will be no chaos and the safety measures are also taken proper care of apart from this there were sign boards which have been placed Uh, or in outside every room which mentions sanitize your hands and wear mask so this were the kind of uh, posters also were been placed there for creating a general awareness in the visitors apart from that there were chairs which have been used for seating arrangement if the chair seating capacity is for three people definitely the center chair was being uh, labeled with cross to make them understand to have a gap between two so that it maintains the social distancing norm so along with this miniature gallery this is this double statue of uh, this double statue of Ma margareta which is a lady behind and the gents in front this is made out of one wooden block is been displayed in salajan museum which is also one of its unique display in the museum along with rebecca well this is also one of the unique display of salajan museum apart from this there is one more unique display of salajan museum which all of us know is the clock the musical clock which struck at every hour if it's 12 a man comes out of the door and rings 12 to and rings the bell for 12 times and that's a very interesting and very soothing for visitors to watch it and this is the ivory coach this 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 is the complete coach which is made of ivory so we can understand that how rich the heritage was through this display this is a toy soldier which explains how the world war 2 scenario was so again to educate children this is into the children's gallery where children through this toy displays can understand okay this was the adolf hitler this is how the sepoys looked army officers looked like this is the costume so that is how you know this contributes in educating the kids as well now to the right corner this is the clock room in the earlier slide as i showed you this clock and this is the area where visitors can sit and enjoy the working of the clock and these are the two screens two huge screens if in case there is a lot of crowd and you don't get a seat or maybe you are standing somewhere in the back this screen will serve the purpose of understanding the mechanism of the clock so this this is one of the addition which was been added as a digital screen and can you see as due to my slides are not been shown in the larger picture if possible can you see there is this cross mark that i was talking about this is the three seater and there is a cross mark in between and then only two people so this is how the pandemic norms are also been followed now the signages and fire extinguishers yes these are the signage signages which have been sign boards which have been placed on every floor of salajan museum which is also an important thing for people to understand if you are lost or if in case you have you are visiting a salajan museum and you just want to visit okay today i just want to visit the iron uh, iron carving gallery so you will definitely follow this sign board and reach directly to the iron carving gallery apart from this sign boards every floor has its own floor plan which somewhere or the other give us an idea that how salajan museum is uh, designed and how the flow and the circulation takes place so that is also another way to educate a visitor about the structure as well because when we talk about museum definitely we talk about artifacts we see the displays we see the uh, whatever it has the rich culture in it we understand the artistic features but apart from this 
the complete cycle of nature only gets complete when we understand its structure as well and what it has to serve us apart from this even the disaster management policies are also taken care of where we can see the fire extinguisher which is been placed on every floor and here every month there fire fire drill drill takes place in order to create awareness when there is some kind of disaster happening and you can see here there's a wheelchair even we have a wheelchair facilities available in this salajan museum so this is about the salajan museum where we got to know about its important artifacts the rich culture it has in having in it and apart from that what all facilities it has provided us and it is providing us and presently the director of salajan museum is nagendra reddy sir and the curator of the museum is kusum sir now coming to the state museum hyderabad the state museum hyderabad is located in public gardens hyderabad is one of the richest repositories of antiquities and art objects in the country the present museum building reflect the indo islamic architecture with subtle domes high arches stylistic windows and projected eaves the museum was formally inaugurated in the year 1931 The Hyderabad Museum was subsequently renamed as the State Museum under the Department of Heritage, Telangana. So this is the entrance of the museum. As I mentioned in the earlier slide, that it belongs to Indo-Islamic style with subtle domes. So this is the museum, which has an Indo-Islamic style of architecture. Apart from that, it has wonderful wooden carvings from temples, which have been placed here from various temples, from various other sources, which have been placed here. where we can see how well the uh, artist was to carve this out of wood this is very beautifully placed with proper labeling from which century it belongs to and and through this we can understand that what was the style of architecture during that particular time period so we have this art gallery which displays various kinds of art among which one of the art is the bidri art which belongs to again to the to the south region where this this is one of the famous out of our region which is known as bidri art and various utensils are made out of bidri art and there are various souvenirs also which are made out of bidri art bidri art is nothing but it its designs are made out of silver thread so that is the beauty of this bidri art and which is this antiquities have been displayed here now we have this ajanta painting gallery these are the copy of ajanta painting gallery one one important thing about museum is if a person was not able to visit that particular important structure still the person or the visitor can cherish the cultural heritage of that particular structure or a monument through museums for example these are the ajanta paintings which have been displayed here and the same paintings we could we are able to see it definitely in the ajanta caves as well now we have this bronze sculpture the important aspect of this bronze sculpture again i apologize for the image size because of my slides can you see the title panel behind this is one of the interesting thing that i found about this museum being uh, into the museum and studying about the museum one more thing that one should understand is how well self explanatory the gallery is and how well we can uh, adapt or we can get the information only through the sculptures and its display through and even the title panel so here you can see the title panel behind the sculptures where each and every sculpture is been photographed and placed the name is been mentioned that it is it is a nandi this is a meru so it has mentioned that there is a meru it belongs to which uh, time period 17th century and then from where they have been uh, they have collected this particular they got it in excavation finding whether it is of uh, whether it has an accession number and if yes then they have written the accession number here and a detailed information about the meru what exactly the meru is how it works and why is it uh, why it has such an importance so that is of every sculpture this is tara so now we have a total in detail information about tara as well so you know this is the kind of contribute small small contributions through this thing how a display just becomes self explanatory so that is one of the interesting thing to understand from the state museum an important finding of this state museum is the egyptian mummy definitely in 2013 this mummy was again uh, conserved 
there was a conservation training which was organized and anupam sa was one of the person resource person who came in and uh, this mummy was being preserved again so this is one of the display of egyptian mummy now can you see again in the display behind the display it has shown the value of egypt the structures of egypt the importance of the mummy for the egyptians and the information about it so this in a way you know educate a person or a visitor or anybody who just drops in and who is interested in history could get the information from here and apart from that it even helps the coming generation also to understand the cultural history and how to preserve it now when i was talking about the loose culture in my earlier slides this was i talking this is what i was talking about these are the ero stones which have been loosely placed behind the state museum though it has a accreditation number but they have been placed so that if anybody who is walking in and around even they have this visual over here as well these are the hero stones and then they stand for sometimes they can understand okay these are also this is also part of a heritage and this also has some historical importance so this is about the state museum now coming to nizam museum hyderabad now nizam museum is a museum located in hyderabad at purani haveli a palace of erstwhile nizams basically that was a palace which was now adaptively reused as a museum as my research is also in the same field so this is one of the contribution like when we talk about it how a museum helps in getting back the life of a monument probably getting back a, because now it was a palace for residing but now only the purpose is being changed as a museum but still the palace importance and its glory and its architecture is still being cherished but with the help of a museum because it has been adaptively used now this museum showcases the gift that the last nizam of hyderabad state received on a silver jubilee celebration can you understand that how strong the alliance of nizams was that this a complete museum has been developed only with the gifts that he received during his silver jubilee celebration so museum also make us understand that how uh, the kingdom or the or the ruler has its alliance and how rich or how good relations it had with the people through his display because that he donated all his displays into the museum The museum is a repository mainly of souvenirs, gifts, and mementos presented by dignitaries to the last Nizam on the occasion of his silver jubilee celebration in the year 1936. To begin with, this is the golden throne which was been gifted to him, which has been displayed in the Nizam Museum. And again, these are the findings. Now, this is something very interesting that Nizam in the Nizam Museum we get to see there were certain findings. which were been found during the excavation from the university of hyderabad which has been displayed here and can you see how beautifully the panel has been developed just to make us understand that what was the last evidence and how was the trade of the city was taking place how was the trench dug how did the display was uh, antiquities was been found and how it has been displayed so this is how a self explanatory uh, showcase talks Now this is the huge wardrobe of Nizam. Can you see the size of the wardrobe? It is so huge that it fills the complete room, and it has two floors. The upper floor there are some displays of shoes, and the lower floor displays of clothes. So this is the huge wardrobe that Nizam used to use during his time. Some of them can even tell it as a walking wardrobe, but we really don't know whether it was a walking wardrobe. But definitely, it looks like a walking wardrobe. So enter it, dress it, and wardrobe itself is like a room. So yes, this is the wardrobe, and this is the students' corner. One interesting thing about this Nizam Museum is it has a school around it. So every time this school kids get to do something in the contribution of uh, the museum, and simultaneously they get good knowledge regarding the history, and even they contribute something or the other to the museum. Something like this poster. Now this was a silver silver cradle. definitely of nizam this is the silver model of high court and this is the silver model of muzamzai market so these are the kind of silver displays that
Now, can you see the silver trowel and ball? Now, basically, every single trowel and ball balls were used to if if Nizam was been or anybody from the royal family has been invited to inaugurate a place, they used to use this particular trowel because there's the first cement that is being placed by the inaugurator or the dignitary. So this particular silver ball and trowel was used for that purpose, and this is again been gifted to Nizam on his birthday. Now this is silver vessels which have been used definitely by the royal family or maybe it has been a gift or a sovereign. Now Chomhala Palace. Now again when I spoke about the adaptive reuse, Chomhala Palace also is a great contribution in the adaptive reuse. Chomhala itself with the name we understand that four palaces. So one of the complex in the four palaces is the Kilawat which contains Darbar Hall has been restored to be converted into a museum to house costumes and artifacts from Nizam collections. Now, among the first examples of European neoclassical architecture in Hyderabad, the Chomala Palace was built by Nizam Salabad Jang in 1750s. The second half of the complex contains four palaces, also organized around a courtyard and water body, which will be restored to create museums of the Nizam on the Nizam's dynasty. So, one of the another contribution in maintaining the dignity of a structure through museum, one of the contribution of museum. So that's the museum complex and the Darbar Hall in the Kilawat complex that I was talking about. This is the complete Darbar Hall. Sorry, uh, don't go for the title. This particular image is shows about how previously the palace looked like and how it is now. And now this is the sketch. Now. To understand that how beautifully they have displayed this sketch, there was a meeting uh, uh, which was happened in the 17th, 18th century in this Darbar Hall. And this sketch was being made to understand the seating arrangement that was being made during that period. And the uh, Viceroy of India was being invited for this particular meeting. It was a British meeting. And Nizam and the position of Nizam is being shown in this with the list of dignitary, where Nizam was sitting in right in the center. and towards his right hand side was the dignitary who was being seated. So through this sketch, one can actually cherish the movement of that particular time period. So this sketch talks about that. Now the old photos of the Nizam, the old photo session, and those old photo sessions can be seen in the digitized form in this particular display, definitely using the digital technology now. This is the textile display. Because of the uh, glare of the glass, the clear picture cannot be seen, but we can take some idea like how the mannequins are being placed, wearing the textile or wearing the fabric of that particular era, showing us the tradition and the culture of that period. Along with it, it shows that how uh, princes or the royal family uh, women uh, get together in the leisure time and how the uh, the royal is sitting in the center and how the women's are you know it's a kind of get together or showing that how what 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 is the activity happening in that particular space by the women so that is how the beautiful display is being done just make to make the visitor understand that how activities and how the culture used to take place in that particular period just it takes directly back to that particular era now the main purpose for showing the ceiling is though it was been adaptive reused as a museum nothing of interiors was changed but maybe little minute conservation must have taken place but the ceiling is being placed as it is if you can see the ceiling it has the same integrity of work being placed now the another museum which is kondapur site museum as i already spoke that the different museums that belong to a uh, department of heritage which was taken care of now this kondapur site museum was being taken care by the archaeological survey of india which came under administration of control of this museum in 1952 now this site was first explored by the famous archaeologist henry cosen in the early of 19th century the site exhibits museums are basically retrieved from an ancient mound locally known as Kottagada Fort Mound, located at a distance of one kilometer east of museum. This museum is located on the small hill lock in the village of Kundapur, Sangaredi district, Telangana. So this is the Kundapur site museum, which is taken care by Archaeological Survey of India. I don't have much pictures of it, this, but definitely this is how the building looks like the archaeological museum. And it has rich, good, collections of Satwana dynasties as well. 
now we have seen there different kinds of museum site museum district museums national museum uh nizam museum adaptive usability of a museum now this sudhakar museum is one of the very interesting and unique museum because it is one of its kind of a theme museum which runs around vintage car and creative vehicle now this museum was established by k sudhakar who was who has the fame of having a guinness book of uh, his name in guinness book of world record for creating a largest tricycle in the world which is around 41 feet and 7 inches and one another interesting creation of his is the small train which has design which has a capacity of 10 people and it is also again 19 foot long the creation was completed in just 20 days and apart from this there various live demonstration of cars will has been organized where he gets out his uh, models of car and he runs it on the tangman road husain sagar lake which is again in hyderabad so one important thing about the sudhakar museum is one person his own creation which is he which he is displaying in the museums and the creation of the car are very interesting this is the display in parking area of the car and this is the collection board which talks about all the wacky cars he he calls the museum as the wacky car and one of its kind in the world a wacky car museum because really his cars and his displays are so interesting to look in and they are very unique and this is the seating which is again in a scooter shape now this is the collection of world war 2 collection where you can see that how the display shows us that what were the uh, vehicle that were used during the world war 2 and you know it just takes us this contemporary museum also takes us to the era of that time this he is the sudha sudhakar he has made himself as a manikyan this is a cartoonish thing and the written the only Baki Car Museum in the world. These are kind of attractive points that you know this attract the visitors' attention, and you know we can cherish these all things like as a photography session or whatever. Now this is the buggy, a small buggy, and it and these are all working models. They they do work. We can drive them. Like he drives certain uh, workings. And a uh, one more uh, point for the mechanical engineer who wants to take forward, they can actually cherish. Each and every dish of this and understand that how innovative a person can be. The endomic car, the purse shaped car. So there are various kinds of it. There's a shoe shaped car. There's this scooter car. There's a camera car. There's this corona car. So you know, there's so many. Any incident taking place, you can see that in the form of a display in the Sudhakar Museum in the form of a vehicle. So this is the kind of contribution that it has. so this were the amazing museums of telangana which somewhere or the other shows us the history the historical background the rich the rich uh, culture it had so to conclude my talk the museum has always contributed in uh, contributing in preserving the cultural history of a region definitely and it is still doing it with the advance uh, another thing that i would like to add here was with the advancement in technology new approaches can be applied in the display of collection which definitely museums are started adapting it when we talk about digital india and this pandemic has given us a very positive note in getting close to a heritage through digital media how every object was been displayed so beautifully and was been uh, we could actually cherish those objects through sitting far away from that museum only through digital media so this advancement in technology also helps in new approaches apart from that more of outreach outreach activities must be uh, must be added in order to promote the museum and educate people more more collaborative works are also been invited by the museums in in order to you know have a good relation because museum also maintain good relation uh, help in maintaining the good relation of the nation apart from that adaptive reuse of monuments as museum as i've given two examples one was the nizam museum which was been adaptive reuse and another was chaumala palace which is again adaptive reuse so we can understand that how a museum can contribute in not only uh, taking us back to the history but also maintaining the dignity of the monument which is a standing evidence of the history apart from that sustainable and modern structures can also accommodate the heritage metric era when i have put my hands on on the parametric structure through one of the workshop i could understand that how this artificial intelligence and this metamorphic and um, 
probably a metamorphic structures can help in creating a sustainable surrounding or sustainable house for this museum where a futuristic or a contemporary structure is housing a ancient and history or heritage belongings so this is a good combination that one should think of to conclude as i already said in my earlier slide museums are social institutions and when a society evolves even the museum Oh, I got muted. I guess. which part was I muted? Sorry. Uh, I, I think I right, yes, you were. I think right towards the end. Um, but I think when you were discussing the last few points on your slides. Okay, okay, so I'll repeat that. I was just trying to say that museum is a uh, museum are social institutions, and when a society evolves, even the museum needs to evolve. That is the only message I was trying to say. That's it. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah. I have a, I have few questions. Can I ask them from you? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes, sure. First of all, in the very first title slide, you showed a sculpture, and you told later on that it is somewhere in Slarjung. It is. It was a beautiful sculpture. I want to know some details about that. Whether it is an Indian sculpture or whether it is further Greco-Roman sculpture or something like that. And uh, the other question is that further. In can I ask multiple questions at the same time or one by one? I should ask. Uh, uh, let me answer you the first question, and then we'll get on to the uh, next question. Okay, the first question that you asked about, uh, I'm audible, right? Yeah, yes, ma'am, yes. The first question that you asked me about the whale Rebecca. Okay, the whale Rebecca structure is sculpture is a marble sculpture, which was created by the Italian neoclassical sculptor. Basically, it is from Italy. And okay. his name was Giovanni Maria Benozzi. Okay, and then later on, he had because this whale uh, Rebecca became uh, uh, started getting famous with uh, show, seeing the intricacy of a stone sculpture. That how a marble can give, get this intricacy. He started conducting workshops. So through that workshop, he could develop more of copies. So one of the copy is in a Salaj museum. So that is the importance of that whale Rebecca, and it belonged to 18th century. Thank you. The second question in one of your slides, there was a Buddha park, something yeah. like that Buddha park. And in that particular picture, there was a Buddha, and there, there was a pillar. On that particular pillar, there was a chakra. Whether that is a real further thing or it is further later on created by it was it is only a creation. Yeah, yeah, it was later on created for okay, the. It is, uh, not, it is not. It is not anti, anti, antique in real sense. No, 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 no. no. Right. Another, another question. In clay toys, you showed further some clay toys in the same time in the same slide. There was a, you know, there were a few slides, and you, and you told that there are African costumes. Whether there are only Indian and African costumes in that those clay toys, or those toys are have for the world over particular uh, costumes you know, of the different different regions. World re different different region costumes. There are certain tribal costumes as well that belongs to different era. Like there's one African costumes as well. So it belongs to different different region. Oh, I'm still worldwide. Last one, last one. There are multiple questions, but this will be the last one. In one of the slide number 16, there was a double statue. Can you shed some more light on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, the double statue. Should I show you the image or uh, the information is enough? I mean, it would be good if you show the image and then elaborate it in a better manner. It would be clear in my mind again. Yeah, sure. Let me share the screen. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is my screen visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, it is yes, visible. Yes, yeah, yeah. it is visible, so, ma'am. Yeah, so this is the double statue of um, Mephistopheles and Margareta. Okay, 
this is uh, this is one of the important finding why it is important finding is because it is made out of a sycamore wood and has two distinct images on the uh, either of the site so that is why it is known as one of the most important uh, or a cherishable uh, sculpture of that particular era so that is the which era ma'am which era which era can you specify the for the era ma'am in which particular year it was uh, created 18th century yeah. Okay, thanks, it is nineteenth century. Thank you. It is, uh, I can take it to nineteen twenty-eight around. So it belongs to eighteen nineteenth century. So thanks a lot, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. Thank you. किसी को और कुछ सवाल है तो पूछ लीजिए. बोबड़े सर अवेलेबल नहीं है क्योंकि वो ट्रैवल में है. Anything else? किसी को कुछ सवाल है तो पूछ लीजिए ठीक है किसी को अगर कुछ सवाल है तो हम आज का सेशन यहीं पे ओके थैंक यू शाह मैडम एंड थैंक यू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स अगर किसी को और कुछ सवाल है तो आप ग्रुप पे भी पूछ सकते हैं सभी को अपने आप से लेफ्ट होना है थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू Sayyid Azam Sayyid Ahmed who is saying that when 